I want to say that there is no any doubt that we purchased this building, we own this building, this building belonged to us. Nobody lived here before we entered, you can see around you. There were no any facilities, anything. Actually, the seller worked here for us. And what the Supreme Court decided is totally political decision based on racism <coughs> against the Jewish people here in Vermont. They prevent us from any building, from any development. So it's not a question of the legal position of this house. It's the position, it's the question of the whole attitude of the Supreme Court and the legal system against the Jewish people in the city of our forefathers and forefathers. This is the issue. So when they say it's a legal case, it's obviously not a legal case. And if this is a legal case, let it be decided in the authority, the legal authority that has the responsibility and the authority to decide in this sort of cases. We have here with us our dear, dear friends from the uh, Syrian Colony of New York. We have here with us Mr. Moise Abraham, who is the, the, what, the friend that purchased the house and will talk. We have here the documents, and later on you will have the documents, we'll spread them. We'll see the, we'll see actually the action of the of the purchasing of the house. And we'll tell you that we will have the documents that we see there and we'll see the No, they, they took the, the uh, 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 bring the new one now. No, I have a shirt Hadash because the shirt is already on. It's very simple. This is a, one of the basic 
foundations of any democracy and it must be insisted and implemented here in the land of Israel. Mr. Morris will show the documents and will spread them. Later on we'll see the film of the purchase of giving the money to the seller. Later on we'll hear the seller on his voice speaking and uh, saying and telling how he actually did it and uh, actually admitted in his voice that he actually sold the house and later on that he got money to renovate the house for us, for, for the one who actually had bought the house. So there is no any question about this uh, deal and about the, the legitimacy of, of the purchasing of the house. So I want to ask my dear friend, Mr. Morris Abraham, to, to say and to speak. I'm, I'm going to speak in English, and I'm going to ask for a little bit of time, because I want to go back to approximately five years ago. Approximately five years ago, on one of my many trips to Israel, and every time I come to Israel, of course I go to Yerushalayim, I go to Beit Lechem, to Kevir Achel, and I always come to Hebron to visit my forefathers in the Ma'at HaMachpila. As we were driving down the highway, somebody on the bus, one of the people that takes us around touring said, you know, there are properties available for sale in the area. Said, so sounds very nice, but I don't, you know, why are you telling me this? I'm not in real estate and I'm really not in up right now to investing in Hebron. I said, okay, but you know what? Show it to me. I'm always curious to see. You never know where things lead. Businessman, that's what I do. You look at every offer that comes across the table. You see what people have to offer. So open door policy is very important. So they showed me a couple of houses closer to the Yishuv of where the Jewish community is living today. I told them they're very nice. But if I'm going to spend money in this territory, I want to make sure I make a difference. And I want to buy something in a strategic area that's going to make a difference. I said, okay, we have a building, but it's very, very risky. I told them, okay, show me the building. And they take me along the bus, and they weren't able to stop on the road, because if you stop on the road, people know things are up. They took me past the building we're in today. And then they took me to the Kiryat Arba side, and you can see how the building stands out. And they said, this building's available. I said, how much is it? And they told me we could probably get it for about a million dollars. They're very nice. It's a lot of money. And that was the end of the conversation. That night, I called my father in the States and I told my father, Dad, there's a situation in Israel. And I un you've always instilled in us love for the land. And what's the situation? I told him about the building. He said, Morris, if you feel it's, uh, it's going to make a difference, if you feel it's going to make a difference, then go for it. So I called back the individual and I told the individual, look, we're willing to take a chance on this building. The individual was shocked, couldn't believe it, that they're going to get somebody now to invest a million dollars in an if, in an unknown said, we're going to go for it. And we started to do our homework. We got together a, a legal team, a legal counsel. We put together a very, very strong legal team. And we started working on the project. And it took a lot of time. It took about three years until we had our I's dotted and our T's crossed. And we made sure everything was Kedat Everything was 
done legally. And the time came approximately 19 months ago when we were ready to move into the building. And I'll never forget that night. I get a phone call. I was in New York. I was working. I was at a customer. And I get a phone call. We're going into the building. The time has come. And with music and dancing and partying, they moved into this building. Here we are, 19 months later, holding on to the building, and we are going to continue to hold on to what is ours. We knew, we knew it was going to be a battle. We knew it wasn't going to be easy. We thought as soon as we move in, the government's going to come, they're going to pull us out, they're going to call us squatters. But when we presented the documents, the documents, which you'll all be able to get copies of, between the original Arab owner in Arabic, selling it to the middleman, selling the house to the middleman, and the middleman selling the house to us, with our power of attorney. The original documents in hand. We went running to the police and we presented it to the police. And the police validated the documents at the time. And the police had no issues with the documents. And as a result of that, they were not able to push us out of the house. And they made orders, they made an inconvenience for us. They said we cannot put windows. The winter time came. We have many young children living in the house. They didn't allow us to put heat in. They didn't allow us to have electricity. But we continued to fight and we grabbed whatever we were able to grab. And 19 months later, the building looks a lot better than it did when we first moved in here. I'm sure there's footage of what it looked like that night. And families are living here. Families are living here very, very comfortably. People ask, why did I want to get involved in Hebron? And there are two, there are many reasons. Of course, it's one of the cities that our forefather, Abraham, Abraham Avinu, purchased. We follow everything in the Torah. What our forefathers did is a symbol for us to do. And we have to hold on to these properties. We have to hold on to... Shechem, which we're holding on by a thread right now. We still have Keve Yosef over there. We're able to go there. We have to continue to hold on to Hebron because if we don't hold on to these areas, next will be Yerushalayim. And we cannot accept this. If they take a house that was legally purchased with documents and remove a person from it, that will give them the right to remove any one of you from your houses tomorrow, whether you're living in Tel Aviv or Haifa or Eilat. This is not a democratic system. When documents are presented, it should go to the proper courts. And the proper courts should handle the case. And this has never been seen in a proper real estate court. It went straight to Bagatz. Bagatz, just for a note, had judge changes a few months ago. Why did they change the judges? They changed the judges because they saw that we were successful and we were going to keep the house. So they went out and they looked for the most leftist judges to preside on the case. And when they presided on the case, the case came out that until we get a legal issue on who exactly owns the house, we want everybody out of the house. Yet. They didn't take into account any of the legal documentation that was presented. They didn't take into account the videotapes, the cassette tapes that were presented. But the reason why I got involved in Hebron was my great-grandfather. He came from Iraq in the early 1920s and he was here during the massacre of 1929. He then went on when he was driven out of here and he went to Yeshiva Porat Yosef which was in the early stages at that time. We are not going to be driven out a second time. Our forefathers were driven out. Once by Arabs we were driven out. 
and this time our own government is trying to drive us out, we will not allow this. An incident that happened to my parents, my father, my mother, they were here, they had to go back to New York yesterday. About, uh, this is going back to about 1990 or so. They came to Hebron when it wasn't a popular thing to do. And they were with my two, two of my younger sisters. And as they were leaving Ma'ata Machpela, it's a documented story, it was in the news then. Someone could find the articles. They were leaving Ma'ata Machpela, going through the back roads. And the driver who was driving them is here with us. Knesset member Nisim Ze'ev was driving them. He was the one who had brought them here at that time. All of a sudden they realized something was wrong. They were being boxed in. And the cars in front of them stopped. And the cars behind them stopped. And all of a sudden they look up and they see people on top of rooftops putting on black masks. And throwing down boulders onto the car. Trying to destroy the car. And my relatives, my parents, my two sisters, and it seems as if they were in the car. And they were able to get out of it, they were able to drive on the street, get a block, get out of the car, find a taxi driver who drove them to the army base. And as a result of that, when we are terrorized or we are victims, we can't just walk away. We have to stay, we have to come back, we have to show our presence, we have to show our presence in all the Yishuvim, we have to show our presence in all of Eretz Israel, which belongs to us. Just a little bit on the legal point. Just a little bit on the legal point. In any democratic society, if the documents that were presented, which again, the police department did authenticate. They said they were true documents. There is no question on the sale of the house. The question that came to light is when there was work being done in the house, why was there work being done in the house by the previous owner? And the reason why work was being done on the house was because we weren't ready to move in and we didn't want to leave it vacant for other people to move in. So we employed him to do work for us. And this is all on the cassette tape where he says he sold us the house, he did work for us in the house, and he got paid for the work that he had done for the Jewish community and for me in the house. So if all of this was presented in any democratic court, it would be seen as an obvious case without any questions. Yet, during election time, people have to worry about where they're going to be in the elections and how they're con con going to continue in their political drive. So they bring it up and everyone tries to do what they can in order to better th their election votes. Anybody who tries to push us out of this house, we will, all over the United States, let them know who these people are, and we will lobby against them. The Sephardic Syrian community in Brooklyn, New York is a very strong community. It's a community very strong in, mo in money and monetary, but also a very strong community politically. And they are all aware of what's going on, and they are all up to the minute on the news of what's going on. And they will not tolerate a leader of the Jewish state who will evacuate people who legally bought property. At this point, if there are any questions that anybody has, I'll be more than happy to take them. Yes. Okay, before, before Sammy, just one note. I'm here now. I'm staying here now. 
I, I arrived this morning. I already took a 45 minute nap in my room. The accommodations are perfect. And nobody's going to push me out of my house. I'm here. And if, and if somebody feels they want to push me out of my house, they know where to find me. I'm here. I suggest that the officials that are trying to do this, please reach out to me. Please try to get in touch with me. And we'll discuss it. We'll show them the paperwork. We'll show them the signatures. And we'll present in a court of law what we have. Thank you very much. Before the questions, we'll hear, uh, we'll hear a few words from uh, Sami Salem in the name of the community, and then we'll see the, the, video, show. the video show about the purchasing of the house, and then we'll get questions. Sami. Okay, sure. As a uh, as a representative of the Sephardic Syrian community in the United States. One of the largest Jewish Sephardic communities, maybe the largest in the world. I'm here to represent them. We're here in a bar mitzvah and we were coming for my son Abraham. And it coincided with Haye Sarah, what we read, what we read this past weekend in the Bible, in which our father Abraham purchased for 400 shekel for his, his family and future generations for life. My, co my, my cousin Morris over here purchased this property, like he said, and I can't understand how it's possible of supporters of the State of Israel since 1948, the Syrian community has been supporting it financially. We love the settlers. We love them. We love the state. We love Eretz Israel. And we cannot understand how it's possible that this government wants to take away a house that was legally purchased. All our lives, my parents and grandparents brought us up to support the State of Israel. We've supported the Keren Kayemet Li Israel, the Jewish National Fund. As a matter of fact, tomorrow we're going to be planting trees in Israel. And for somebody to uproot a house and families is like uprooting the trees that we planted for all these years. Even the non-Jews, they can't believe that such a thing could happen. That a state that believes in their citizens and spreading the, la the, 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 the land and redeeming land, how is it possible to take it away when something was purchased legally like Abraham Avinu? It wants... I want to come to tears just thinking about it. I visited this house many times and the highlight of our trip many times is coming to visit Hebron and seeing these settlers there. They, they give their lives, they give their souls and we love them. They're caring people and our community has always backed Hebron and the people of Hebron. I just want to end and say, Od Avinu Hai. Our father Abraham still lives here. 
and Am Yisrael Hai. עכשיו, נקרין עכשיו את הסרטים. חבר'ה, שנייה. תרגיד גם באנגלית. תרגום לאנגלית. Okay, okay. Is that right? 